Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. Today's video is going to be a follow-on from the video I did, I think it's like two Watch and Learns ago, uh, where we talked about where you should not change the day and date of your watch between the hours of like 9 p.m. and 3 a.m., uh, and why you shouldn't do that. So if you didn't watch that video, it would be a good idea to watch it uh, before watching this one, so you can see how uh, Seiko handles the day-date change, and you can see how there's a couple of plastic gears and they can fairly easily break and I actually did manage to break it though not on camera uh, and your watch that needs to be repaired the whole move needs to be pulled out the hands dial uh, parts replaced so I, I should have expected this question but uh, I didn't a lot of people started to ask about different manufacturers Etta uh, what do they use they have plastic parts it's a more expensive movement uh, is it more refined is it, is it protected against this sort of thing so I went into a bin, I got out a uh, Eta 2824, and I think, well, there's a couple of loose pieces in here, but we'll figure it out. Uh, we're going to put it under the, uh, put it on the table first so I can show you uh, a better high quality view, and then we'll put it under the microscope to see what happens. And I guess the real lesson we're going to learn on this one, though, is uh, people want to know is how does the date change so fast on an Eta, um, as opposed to a Seiko or any other, uh, you know, a Japanese movement or a Chinese movement. They generally slowly change from one date to the next, whereas an Eta, it's a fairly instantaneous snap. I mean, you can kind of see things going on, but it's fairly quick. So how do they do it? So we'll, get, we'll show you that, and uh, hopefully you're a little more educated. Oh, wait, before we do that, uh, people were asking about the watches I wore in one of the last videos, and I don't think you've ever seen these before. I don't think so. This is a Yes Cosmos watch, and it is it's a cool engineer's watch, I think. It gives you sunrise time, sunset time, moon phase, moon rise, moon set, 24-hour time. It does a whole bunch of stuff. It's really cool. Uh, you set it to uh, your, your Latin lounge, and the watch does the rest. And then the other one I'm wearing, it was time f uh, to go through the drawer and pick out some watches that needed fresh batteries. It's an old Wenger uh, stopwatch uh, chronograph. And what I really like about this watch, especially being a lefty, uh, excuse me, especially wearing it on my left wrist, uh, the crown and the crown lugs, the guards, almost make like a circle. And it's extremely comfortable. No, I don't know if they make this anymore. I have no clue. Uh, it was a watch that I sold many, many years ago. And I thought it looked pretty neat. It was on a bracelet. I put it on... Uh, you know, blue and red strap, and I think it looks really good. Anyway, so now uh, let's get on over and uh, take a look. So under the scope, we lose a certain amount of, I guess, resolution. So before we get there, I wanted to show the Eta as close as I can without the camera losing focus. And this might be about as close as I can get. So this is dial side. Again, you should watch the other watch and learn that I did. Um, and uh, I showed you how I took the hands off and the dial off and got to this part of a uh, Seiko at, uh, 7S26 movement. This is an Eta 2824. Uh, I did the same exact thing. So you can see that with the crown fully pushed in, I can wind it. It actually does run. If I flip it over, I'm going to lose the hour wheel, so I can't flip it. But it runs. If I pull the crown out one click, one way does nothing. The other way changes the date. And you can kind of see what's going on down here in the lower right hand corner. You see that? And again, I'll get I'll zoom in on the microscope on that one, but it, it is a metal gear. There's no plastic going on here. And that's how it pushes. And then just like the 7S26, there's a certain there's a special gear up here. Let me get a get a pointing, a pointing thingy. There's a special gear up here that engages the teeth on the date wheel and again you'll see now that the teeth are metal on the date wheel so when you pull the crown on two clicks advance the time forward you can see the hour hand in the center rotates and then you see a, th a thing on that wheel uh, looks like a little shark fin sticking up I'm gonna point again with my pointy thingy right there that will engage the date wheel push it and all of a sudden it'll snap and it just snapped over now i'm going to show you why that happens under the microscope as you saw as i was advancing the time nothing particularly moved um really slick really nice but what i want to do just just as a this is really an aside you know a lot of people say you know why 
I'm just going to bring up Rolex. Why is Rolex so expensive? Uh, it's just another automatic watch. And yeah, that's true. But it's a certain amount of engineering that goes into their watches. Same thing with Paddock. Um, and if you look at this ETA, as I advance, I'm going to pull it up. As I advance the time, um, the date is, I don't know if you could see it. The date is actually slowly moving before, it is moving. See it moving? Before the quick set jumps. It actually does move a little bit, and that's great, wonderful, um, works great. Rolex, Paddock, they're a little bit different. Let's, I have my, um, my Submariner here. Let's take a quick look at it. Here's my Submariner, and you can see I'm advancing time. It's, it's PM. I'm passing 11. Watch the date. Just watch it as the hour hand goes. Ready? 50. 55. Do you see the date moving? Do you see it pretensioning? Do you see anything? I'm going to pass 12. That's amazing. That is cost. And this watch is, has never been serviced, and it's uh, 11 years old or so. Um, that is part of the, one of the things that you pay for. It is an art. It is amazing. Uh, Edit does it on a very affordable scale, but you could easily see the date started to index before we got to midnight, uh, whereas on the Rolex, it kind of doesn't. It is a truly instantaneous jump. Anyway, so next we're going to switch perspectives, and we'll pull out the microscope, and we'll look at the Edda under the scope. Okay, so I've got the movement mounted. Uh, again, this is dial side is pointing up, and you can see the various gears. Uh, so we're going to w change the time with the stem right here. Uh, you know, pull it out two clicks to change the time. And the first thing we'll do is we're going to watch this wheel, because this is the wheel that's going to turn clockwise, and this little notch here is going to engage the date wheel right here. These these uh, little teeth on the outside are going to connect with this little tooth that's going to go around clockwise. So it's going to go around slowly. I'm going to advance the time uh, and then we'll uh, we'll fast forward it a bit. Okay, so now we're at a position where this is about to engage the teeth of the date wheel. I'm going to zoom in on this in a second, but for now I just want you to see, you know, the, the bird's eye view of the entire movement and what happens. And then there is, down here, there's a click that sits in between the two teeth of the date wheel so that it provides a little bit of resistance. So watch what happens as I advance the wheel. And now watch that tooth is now hitting the tooth of the date wheel. But now do you see, and again, we'll, we'll get in close on this in a second. This wheel is actually still turning. This is still turning. This is not moving. This is spring-loaded. This little tooth here is spring-loaded. So I'll advance it some more. As you, I'm advancing, you can still see the wheel is still moving, yet that finger is not. And then eventually we'll hit a point where there's enough tension, and the wheel will, act, will start. And if you look over here, this is starting, this click or this detent is starting to disengage, and then this uh, this tooth is building up enough spring force that it's going to finally snap the date wheel to its next position. And it's all over. So now that we've watched that, let's, um, let's just advance this a little bit. And then let's check out the quick set, just because a lot of people asked about the quick set date change. That's down here. I know I showed it to you before, but I think maybe with the microscope it's a little bit better. So what we'll do is we'll zoom in on that and we'll check it out. So now we zoomed in on the quick set date wheel and I'm going to pull out the crown one click. And you saw some movement at the top of the screen. That's the different um, levers moving around. And if I rotate it counterclockwise, you'll see at the top, I'll, I'll now point at the screen. This tooth is moving and that's a direct result of me. I just took my fingers off. This is a direct result of me hitting, um, touching the crown or rotating the crown and that meshes with this wheel here and then this tri-shaped tooth is attached to this wheel and this tri-shaped tooth is what uh, engages with the teeth on the date change. So I'm going to go again. See I turn, nothing happens because I'm spinning it the wrong way. I spin it the right way. You'll see just like in this echo movement, all of a sudden the gear moves to a different position and you see that tooth, it's trying to rub against the brass, it doesn't fit, so it'll get it on the next go around, and here it comes, and it's just going to push it.
and you hear the click. I don't know if the microphone picks up the click, but that's it. And that's how the quick set date change works. You know, fairly similar to the way the Seiko movement did it. Seiko movement did it with you know, with plastic gears. These are metal. So what we're going to do now is we'll zoom back out to the other side of the movement and we'll check out how the uh, the natural date change mechanism works. Okay, so now we're zoomed in on the other side of the movement and I'm looking at that wheel with that um, with the finger on it that engages the date ring. And I'm just going to move down a little bit. I wanted to show you this right here. This is the detent here this kind of spring lever that holds the date wheel in check uh, and prevents it from moving prematurely and allows it to be uh, preloaded for fast date changes. So I guess I'll do this twofold. The first time I'll do is I'll change the date normally uh, without you looking at the other wheel and that might just take a second but then watch that spring loaded lever. There it goes. It's getting kicked out of the way. Boom. And then what we'll do now is we'll come back up here and we'll watch this guy do its magic. Okay, so now we're at a point where it's probably getting close to midnight, uh, maybe 11.30, 11.45, and you can see the tooth just engaged the date wheel. But it's spinning, right? But nothing's happening. This wheel is spinning. This gear is spinning. This tooth is not moving. It is it is on a spring that you can't see. It is spring loaded. Check this out. As you keep turning, there's a spring in here. It's coiling up or it's getting compressed. Uh, maybe it's a helical spring. I'm not sure. Uh, and it's getting s squished more and more, to use a technical term. And it just wants to unleash its spring force, but it can't because the detent that we looked at a second ago is holding it back. Eventually, the spring compresses so much that it makes enough force, and there it goes. It's starting to push the date wheel out of the way. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. The detent is popping out, and it just flung it. So now that the date just changed over, what happens if you go to do a quick set? Well, let's find out. Move the crown, and now we'll advance the date. See that? Kind of the same thing that happened in the Seiko movement. Remember the finger moved down? Uh, but that was plastic. This is this is metallic. Much nicer, right? And now what happens if we try to move the time backwards through the date? For all those of you that constantly ask, well, like I said, that finger is spring-loaded. So there it goes. See you later. So we're advancing the time backwards through midnight, and then we can go ahead. If you watch lacked a quick set date, you know this this is the nine to three method back and forth of setting the date. Uh, but that's it. That, that's the way the ETA 2824 does it. Um, it's the way a lot of movements do it. It's just a, a really nice, um, it's a really cool solution. It gives you a nearly instantaneous date change. You know, not perfect, but but not bad. And then before we sign off, you know, I caught this before. And just uh, maybe it's another watch and learn. You hear about KIF, you hear about Inca block shock protection. Uh, this is it right here. This is the heart of the beast. Um, this little clover shaped spring is um, it's holding this capsule back and that's what allows the balance pivot to oscillate in and out of the screen and that is shock protection and I guess I guess what I'm doing is setting me up for another watch and learn but anyway uh, this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you how the uh, edit 2824 date change module works please like this video if you enjoyed it I should use my monogram thumb uh, please subscribe to our channel, channel if you have not done so yet. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.